hello viewers welcome to today exciting episode of the relationship show on today episode we are looking at marriage under nigeria laws um with his honor emiaso you are welcome sir i'm glad to be here you are welcome sir i'm very glad to be welcome here. sir thank you so as we proceed sir um who is a wife because we do see things like um, a woman is in the house, a bright price has been paid, but has no kids. But a woman is outside with five kids for the man. So in between these two women, who is actually, who is a wife? Who is a, a wife? Mm. Under the English type marriage. Yes, sir. Is that woman that has undergone a form of ceremony okay. with another man known okay. as a marriage ceremony okay. arising from a license to marry issued to the both of them to marry okay. because under the marriage act yes sir. if you want to get married you you will go to the marriage registry and give notice that both of you want to marry Okay. that the marriage registrar will publish a notice for 21 days okay. that anybody who has any objection why these two people cannot marry should raise it otherwise forever keep quiet okay. if there's no objection that is raised a license is issued to them to marry okay, okay? now if they then go through a ceremony yes. of marriage Based on that license to marry, that woman is a wife. Okay. She is a wife. the wife, whether she has children there or not. Okay. Whether she has children there yes. or not. And if there is another woman elsewhere, anywhere, who has 20 children okay. and did not go through this form of ceremony, okay. she is not a wife wow under the marriage act That's under the english form of marriage, marriage. Okay. under customary law yes sir. a wife is that woman yes sir upon whom bride price has been paid bride price has been paid yes wow if bride price is not paid on you okay. you are not a wife even with kids even if you have 40 kids okay. with this man and you have been with him for 45 years okay. you are not a wife but the children are the man's children okay. for all purposes including okay. succession and inheritance interesting yes but you unless you went through a a ceremony of marriage okay. at which bride price was paid on you okay. you are not a wife okay. you are at best a concubine interesting so sir what about this if there is no woman um that's bride price has been paid on and this woman and a man choose to stay together and they have kids cohabiting can you enlighten us a little bit about i mean it's just the same way that is what i've just said okay. if they are living together in under one roof and okay. they are producing children in fact under the pseudo marriage form of the church okay. they are living in sin they are living in sin yes okay they are not husband and wife Okay. okay, under our traditional African social morality, yes, these are irresponsible people. Irresponsible people. Interesting. Yes. How can you take another man's daughter, daughter. into your room, under your roof, and you are producing children with her, and you don't have the courtesy and respect to go and, you know, regularize your position with her parents? Okay. and marry her properly as a wife okay. you are immoral 
Okay. You are irresponsible. Interesting. Okay. Under the act marriage form. Yes. Sir. Of course. I mean, you are not recognized at all. You have not come to say you want to get married, so they don't recognize you as marriage. Wow. As or as being married. Okay. Okay. So so, the, the only thing that can come of benefit to such relationship of okay. cohabitation is yes, that sir. the children cannot suffer any disability as a result of the irresponsible behavior of their parents. parents. Interesting. Section 42 of the Nigerian Constitution. Okay. Okay. Shields these children. You cannot discriminate against them on the basis of the circumstances of their birth. Parents. So, sir, you talk about three types of marriage in Nigeria. You did not measure this common law marriage. So what about this common law marriage of a team and its benefits to parties involved? If I understand what you mean. Yes, sir. Um, first, let me shock you. Okay. that there is no such thing as a common law marriage in Nigeria. Interesting. Okay. okay. In England, yes, there is what is generally referred to as a common law marriage, okay. which is a situation where a man and a woman have cohabited for a long time and have produced children. Okay. The common law then presumes them to be married is just, just a presumption that they are married and that presumption is put in place to protect the children of that otherwise uh, immoral unlawful living together as it were okay, okay. you're not married and you're producing children, children. okay, okay. A child that is produced out of wedlock okay. before now is a bastard. Before now? Yes. Before now in Nigeria. You know, I, I think even in England it is still, it's no longer the same. The yes. thinking has changed. Change. You know. okay. But before now, any child that is born by persons who are not married to each other okay. is an illegitimate child. Such a child cannot inherit from his parents wow. when the parents die. Okay. okay? That is before now. Yes. Mm. And that's because um, the common law saw the absurdity of it with regards to the children of that kind of cohabitation. Okay. That's why the presumption of marriage is developed. Okay. That presumption of marriage is a presumption of marriage for the protection of the status of the children. Children, okay. Not that it confers marriage status on, on the two Parties, of you. Okay. Now, that kind of presumption is not applicable here in Nigeria at all. Oh. We do not have what we call common law marriage in Nigeria. In Nigeria. Okay. The nearest to it is your earlier question about persons who have cohabited for a long time. Okay. And the answer I gave to that your question applies to this situation if you want to call it, you know, a common law marriage. There is no such thing as a common law marriage known under Nigerian laws. Okay? Interesting. You are cohabiting without con uh, contracting any marriage, whether under customary law or under the act, you as the woman, you are a concubine. Concubine. Yes. Uh, to use uh, perhaps a modern day coinage of you young people, you are a side mistress. chick. Mistress. Yes, okay, a mistress. Side chick. You are a side, side chick. chick, you are a mistress. <laughs> okay. okay. But before now, the children that you will produce as a mistress or a side chick, it's a bastard. That is illegitimate. Yes, it's illegitimate. The Yoruba will call it Somali. Okay. Okay? You cannot inherit from your own parents. That's serious bad Yes. Then. And that was why when the 1979 constitution was enacted, the section 42, uh, you know, 
the present section 42 of the 99 was put there that no Nigerian citizen can be discriminated against on the basis of the circumstance of his birth. So if they gave birth to you on the basis of some irresponsible behavior by your parents, parents. you, the child, okay. should not be punished for the for offense this. of your parents. You were not there when they did what they did. They did. You were not consulted. So why punish you by denying you your right to inheritance? The law that's is just, very normal. Yeah, that's just the reasoning behind yes. Section 42, mm -hmm. which runs against discriminating against discriminating anybody on the circumstances. Yes. Of, and then it takes away the stigma, the labeling of anybody as a bastard. Yes. It takes away that labeling of an illegitimate uh, child. child yes. So in Nigeria, we do not have illegitimate children, children anymore as a result of the provision of that section 42. Wow. But please, let's stop talking about a common law kind of marriage in Nigeria. In Nigeria. We do not okay. have that common law. We received common law as part of Nigerian laws. Okay, we received the English common law as part of Nigerian law. But if on any subject matter, Okay. Nigeria has made its own laws, okay. enacted its own statute okay. on any particular subject matter. Okay? That, that statute overtakes the common law. Okay. The common law goes to rest. Okay. And on the issue of marriages, we now have a marriage act and the matrimonial causes act. Acts which makes provisions for everything and anything concerning relationships between a man and a woman. So we have no business having any resort back to common law okay. because we have enough written laws in country that controls and regulates our forms of marriages and everything, including divorce and the consequences of divorce and all of that. Okay. Oh, yes. So what about if a, a party is being proposed for marriage and eventually when you have chased other prospective suitors away, that party now cut off the engagement? Are there any... Oh, oh, oh yes. I mean, ordinarily, yes, sir. a mere promise to marry okay. where the other party has not changed his position may not give rise to a sustainable course of action. Whoa. But if there is a promise to marry okay. and relying on that promise to marry, okay. one party has changed his position okay. financially and otherwise, has given up certain interests in order to get this marriage done. done. Okay. And then this guy just wakes up one morning and says, no, he's no more doing. Yes, there is likely to be a sustainable cause of action okay. for damages. Interesting. Yes. For damages, I say. For damages. But not that anybody can be forced okay. into marriage. Okay. Because voluntary consent is an integral fundamental requirement of a valid marriage. Nobody can be forced into a marriage without his or her volunt her consent, his consent, voluntarily given. Okay. Voluntarily given. Okay. If you as a girl, your parent compelled you. Yes, sir. That marriage is not a true marriage. Interesting. If you as a girl, the young man deceived you to marry. in getting your consent to marry him. Maybe he's already married somewhere. Okay. Or he's not married but he has children by some other woman okay. somewhere and he did not disclose to you okay. that he has these other children somewhere else. Okay. And it is such that if he had disclosed to you, you would he not have given have. your consent to marry him. The day you discover the truth, yes, you sir. can pull out of the marriage. Interesting. Yes, because it means it means that your your consent to marry, at the time you gave it, was obtained from you by, by fraud. fraud. 
Interesting. It was not a voluntarily given consent based on the on a knowledge of the facts, the whole facts that informed the giving of that consent. Okay. So before we bring this show to an end, can you tell us if we have um, a particular age whereby the Nigeria child, both the male and the female, can go into marriage? 18. Before now, before 2003, before the enactment of the Child Rights Act, Act okay. we had arguments as to what age okay. a child, especially the girl child, can get married. Okay. And there were different ages given. Some jurisdiction will say it's 12 for the girl, 17 for the man. In the Muslim North, they don't even talk about age. They talk about whether the girl is mature enough, okay. you know, by just looking at her bodily features and all of that, and they say she's able to get married. Okay. And there are some customary law settings that you can actually contract, contract a marriage with a child, okay. but you will have to wait until you okay. marry her. Okay. You marry her, probably pay bright price, she's your wife, then okay. you watch her grow until when she's mature enough or age enough for you, her to come and resume uh, marital responsibilities. Ah. Yes. What if she becomes of age and decides not to... Well. Um, the issue of whether she gave consent may arise if she doesn't okay. want to. Okay. Because the consent at that time is the consent of her parents, of her parents not of okay. her. Okay, and I've said in this program that consent of the parties that are getting married is crucial. Even under okay. customary law that we said the marriage is between two families. Yes. The consent of the two individuals yes. that represent the two families yes, is fundamental. Interesting. It's fundamental. There, there was one uh, point I was going to make. Okay, I was going to talk about the provision of the Child Rights Act. The Child Rights Act. Now, the Child Rights Act that was enacted in 2003 puts the age of a child okay. at anybody who is below 18. Okay. And that law says that anybody who is below 18. Yes, sir. Cannot have sexual intercourse. Okay. That is why that law says that any man who has sexual intercourse with a girl who is below 18, 18. commits okay. rape with that child, even if the girl agreed, consented, asked for it, okay. and you had sexual intercourse with her, and the thing comes to court and it is established that as at the date you had that sexual intercourse with her, she, she was, was below, below 18. 18. You are guilty of rape. Wow. And the punishment for rape is life imprisonment. Okay. Okay? That is a capital now, offense. If a girl under 18 yes, sir. cannot have sex, yes. the reasoning in the Child Rights Act is that a girl under 18 yes. has not matured enough to know what consent is. is. Okay. So she does not have the capacity to consent to sexual intercourse. Okay. And sex is a fundamental incident of marriage. Wow. You cannot get married With unless her. you are able to have sexual intercourse. Okay. Either you know, pathologically or legally. Okay. If you suffer any incapacity okay. that deprives you from being able to have sexual intercourse, then you are not capable of contracting a marriage. A marriage. Okay. okay? So if the Child Rights Act says now that anybody who is under 18 cannot yes. have sexual intercourse, it means that the minimum age for a girl, for anybody to get married, married is above 18, 18, 18 and above. 18. That is settled now. Although it must be stated that the Marriage Act is a federal enactment, yes, sir. but it is required that each state should domicile it 
Okay. And not every state has domiciled the, mar the Child Rights Act, Act. Okay. unfortunately. Okay. But for those states that have domiciled the Child Rights Act, that is the position of the law. Okay. And for those persons who are living in territories, parts of Nigeria that are strictly governed by federal enactment, like the Federal Capital Territory, yes. that is the law there. Okay. Okay? Interesting. But states, I mean, if you want the provisions of the Child Rights Act to be applicable to that state, yes. you have to domicile it okay. with modifications to suit your local, local, local circumstances. Okay. Interesting. This will bring us to the end of today's episode on the Relationship Show. I'm it's grateful. nice to have you in the studio today. It's been my pleasure. Grateful, it's been my pleasure You're to be welcome, here. Sir. Yes. Please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And when you do, click the notification bell so that you can be the first to be notified whenever we update new video. You are very free to drop your comments on the comment section. We need your opinion. Please, see you next time.